Yo, what's up? Bob here. Welcome to Vinyl Finds on the Bob Bradley YouTube channel. This is number 48. That's right, folks, number 48. Um, last week, I alluded to the fact that I had found some records, um, but the record show had gotten in the way of me showing those records. I was super excited about it. Still am. Found a few more records this week. I'm going to show them all on this video right now. It is a rather fat stack. So buckle up, hold on, here we go. Coming in hot, bam, another West Montgomery record on A&M, CTI, Mint State, familiar brownish tan label. Um, you know, I love to listen to these records um, late at night with my feet up taking care of uh, things I have to do on the interwebs, maybe checking a little email, uh, possibly doing a little bit of uh, drawing on the iPad or, um, <clears throat> you know, whatever, answering your comments that are left below. This is really cool record and um, sounds excellent, as most West Montgomery things do. If you're into jazz guitar, beautiful jazz guitar, play through arch top hollow body guitars this is your jam west montgomery down here on the ground i am building a bit of a west montgomery collection right now next i was out i found a bit of a soul stash that's right folks soul, soul stash. stash and <clears throat> one of the interesting records that i found was this Boom. The Chaplains from 1963 to 1966 on this white cover. Evidently, this record never came with a cover. and had this generic white cover. This one features all the autographs of the guys in the band. This was a band out of Nashville. They all went to Vanderbilt. Um, and they had a bit of a soul band there. This is a, a record on mic called More Soul by The Chaplains. It's primarily cover tunes, uh, Gloria, Turn On Your Love Lights, My Girl, um, All My Lovin', uh, Deep Purple Midnight Hour, things of that nature. Um, the, the, these soul records belong to uh, Kat. Uh, she's still got her um, name tag on here from from all the, from the 60s, I would imagine. Um, Miss Kathy is her name. So I now have Miss, Ka Miss Kathy's records. I got this one here on the private press. $1.99, by the way. <clears throat> uh, also out of Kathy's collection, bam, Otis Redding, The Dock of the Bay. Everybody knows Otis Redding. He's an American legend and treasure. Um, his music... It's been a part of the tapestry of our lives. If you're of a certain age, this is on the Volt label. This is a record if you, it, that I think everybody should have. Um, it's a stereo copy. Uh, I, I love this Volt thing here. But it obviously opens with Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. Classic tune with that incredible whistling in there. Uh, Otis Redding, one of the greatest soul singers to ever do it. Part two of that is, boom, the immortal Otis Redding. This is a record that came out uh, after he died, I believe. It was unreleased material. And, you know, it's on that purple and tan Atco label. Super clean copy. Minty. $7. Both of the Otis Redding records were $7 a piece. Now, let's get serious. <clears throat> now, this is not an expensive record, but when I see Blue Note, I tend to, whoo, I tend to buy it. Jimmy Smith plays Fats Waller. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is on that mono Blue Note. That's right, this is, uh, this is, uh, New York. Uh, 
Vinyl, very nice. Cover, eh, maybe VG at best. But <clears throat> pretty nice record. Um, you know, Jimmy Smith, good party music. Pop the records on, have a good time. That's, that's, that's how it works. Blue Note. Speaking of Blue Note. Boom, Stanley Turrentine, Joyride. Herbie Hancock's on this. Uh, the cover's a little bit, it's got a little bit of wear here on the on the uh, photograph part of the cover. Vinyl, super clean, also a New York pressing. I'm sure it came out on that. Um, mono. You know, anytime I see Blue Note, if I got the money and the record's pretty clean, it's got to come home. You know. So, it's going to get a little controversial here, okay? And before I even start showing the records, I'm just going to say, remember, always trust your ears, okay? Trust your ears. I bought these records from a uh, place that accepts returns, so I could return them if I didn't like the way they sounded. Uh, when I discovered these records, I immediately... <laughs> did a Google search, went to the Hoffman forum, and read very mixed reviews about the sound quality of these records. <clears throat> I brought them home, put them on my system, and thought they sounded pretty good. So, I've chose to keep them. They're beautiful records. Uh, they sound amazing. And um, I don't know how much of that has to do with my gear or how much of it just has to do with the pressing or whatever but I'll just say that there are mixed reviews about these records on the internet and I do not care I think they sound good so I bought them they were about ten dollars a piece coming in hot boom Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage this is an 80s press on um, DMM that's a uh, direct metal master process. It's where they create like a uh, like a copper uh, plate off of off of them. It comes right out of the ma off the master tapes, and then they they make a father, and then the mothers are this kind of weird copper plate that allows them to achieve um, different results. But a lot of people thought that these sounded kind of thin and um you know people use words like brittle or whatever i didn't hear any of that maybe i don't have the records that they had but all the ones i have sound pretty darn good and this is one of those records that sounds amazing um took it to jeffrey lee's we put it on his rig and it sounded pretty good his exact words were he didn't think it was quite as lush as um an original Blue Note pressing, but he said he would have bought it, so I did. It's on this uh, Blue Note label here, audiophile grade vinyl, Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage, very nice record, mint condition. All these records are mint, okay, um, that I'm about to show you. <laughs> Boom, Herbie Hancock, The Prisoner. Uh, also on DMM, Blue Note, about an 86 pressing. Um, this uh, record here, Herbie uh, wrote after the death, of, um, well, I should say, Conspiracy and Assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And, uh, you know, it's uh, a reflection of the zeitgeist at that time. It's a really interesting record. If you've never heard it before, check it out on the internet or whatever. If you see the record for sale, definitely buy it. Interesting cover art. Uh, did not have this, so had to pick this up. Beautiful record. Beautiful record. Next. Boom. Soul Station. Hank Mobley with Art Blakey, Winston Kelly, and Paul Chambers. Yeah, that's a group of killers there, huh? And uh, cool album artwork. 
This is not a DMM, but uh, from the same period. Pretty nice record. Sounds really good. Speaking of Art Blakey. Boom, moaning. Um, these records are really beautiful. Um, you know, I, I just couldn't pass them up. This is a great record if you're into jazz drumming. Art Blakey's one of the greatest to ever do it. And um, Monin, it's a classic record. Didn't have it. These are awesome um, placeholders, or possibly permanent uh, records. For me, if I don't come across the original ones. So, really happy to have them. Uh, my favorite jazz saxophonist currently. Boom. Sonny Rollins, Volume 2. That's right. Look at this group of people. Monk, Art Blakey, Paul Chambers, Horace Silver, J.J. Johnson. This is a killer record. Um, on that DMM label, Blue Note. Yeah, beautiful condition. <laughs> now, these the photographs are not as good of scans as, say, uh, on the Tome Poets, Art Music Matters, or on the originals, obviously. But they still look pretty good. And um, I've been watching a lot of Sonny Rollins lately. What a guy. Head tucked, arm out, just shredding on that horn. And uh, i just seen a really cool video that I will pin at the top of the comments. Please watch it. Uh, it's great. Um, if you haven't figured it out, I post, I, I put things that I see that I think are cool, I pin at the top of the comments. Okay? And uh, I will I will do that video that I saw. So, this is um, Sonny Rollins Volume 2. Getting into a little Sonny here. Boom. Live at the Village Vanguard. Yeah. This is just Sonny playing a gig. You know? And it's, it's really cool. Maybe three piece. And uh, maybe a piano, but I listen to it. I'll put some of it in. It sounds incredible. Cool cover <laughs> on DMM uh, pressed vinyl. This stuff is this stuff is amazing. Okay, so that is all of those. But a pretty beastly stack of blue notes, by the way. You know, material on the blue note record label. But we're not done with Sonny Rollins. Here we go. Boom. This is like a second or third pressing. Uh, Sonny Rollins Brass. It was released under a different title originally. But I do prefer this cover. Uh, this is on that Black Verb Stereophonic label. Yeah. Walking past a place that I never see having good records. And this is just in the window. And I'm like, oh. Went in there and whew, got it. Um, not an not not a super expensive record, but Sonny Rollins, I love it. Next, an artist that Jeffrey Lee's been turning me on to. I was obviously aware of him. He plays on Kinda Blue and many other Miles Davis records. Um, his records are super rare, super expensive, super hard to get. In the words of Jeffrey Lee Puckett, Bill Evans doesn't play piano, he inhabits it. Boom, I got this one. The Paris Concert Edition 2. It's on the Electra Musicians label. Um, this record is not expensive. You can find it from time to time. Um, it's great. It sounds incredible. Bill Evans plays on another level. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. And, you know, another one of those guys that uh, I love to listen to at night. Really just beautiful sound and music. And I also like checking out the video, uh, Bill Evans' videos on YouTube. He's an interesting character to see how he just kind of moves around and operates. Um, it's really interesting to me. Getting into uh, some, some more piano stuff, real serious piano stuff. Boom, Solo Monk, what? Look at the condition of this. And the cover is so incredible. This is one of my favorite covers. And I was waiting to get a really clean copy. This is a 70s repress, but you know, the vinyl's mint, the cover looks good. It is a it is a really sufficient placeholder for me right now. Um, just look at that. I can't leave this behind, are you crazy? <laughs> Whew. Uh, Another monk, boom, Thelonious Monk, crisscross. Look at the photo here. 
you know. Really cool. If you've never seen Monk play, there are some videos of him on the internet and elsewhere. And he's got a really unique style. The way his fingers move on the keys and stuff uh, is just ultimately interesting. And, you know, these guys, there's only one Thelonious Monk, okay? There's a... Uh, there's only one Coltrane. There's only one Miles Davis. One of my favorite stories about Monk is he walks out on stage. I'm sure you've all heard this. The, and just walks over to the piano. The lid's up. And he just takes the lid and just poof, slams it down and walks off stage. <laughs> great, great story. And uh, <clears throat> super stoked to have these Monk records. Here's another one. Monk's Dream, the Felonious Monk Quartet. Got a little bit of wear here on the face, uh, but could not leave behind on that 2i, as this one was as well, by the way. Both 2i Columbia labels. Real cool. Uh, Monk Virtuoso. Now, <clears throat> let's get into something real serious. I've been looking for this record for a while. Jay from Vinyl in the Van actually offered me one uh, a while back, and uh, I was like, you know, I'm trying to find it in the wild. I want to see how long it takes, so I didn't kind of follow up on that. Shout out to Jay over there at Vinyl in the Van. <clears throat> Check his channel out. But, um, you know, the Vinyl Gods, they're weird. Weird, weird Vinyl Gods. I've been looking for this record, so I found this one. Boom, Mint Condition Giant Steps. It's my favorite jazz record of all time. And if you're getting into Coltrane and you don't have any of his records, this is the one I would suggest buying first. Um, this is PR pressing on this label here. Very nice, Mint Condition. A few days later, I find this. Another one, Mint Condition Specialty pressing on the same label. These are probably late 60s. Uh, beautiful records, nice placeholders until I find a, a a pinwheel or a mono pressing or you know two you know whatever another uh, more appropriate older pressing or whatever. But these are great and I got no problem with them. Played them both; they both sound spectacular. Um, you should definitely, if you don't have this, you need to get it right away. If you start with earlier train records, you can kind of hear the progression that he's following. You can hear licks out of, um, you know, Giant Steps or Naima uh, in his earlier material, you know, like building up to what would be the birth of this record. This is a spectacular jazz album. And if you've never heard it, it should be, boom, right at the top of your list of things to hear. Giant Steps by John Coltrane. Now, I did find another train record. Boom. That's right. John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman on that Impulse label. This is, of course, as Coltrane is on the way to becoming 100% Coltrane-ness. Okay? He, his, his very definitive, specific style is being forged in the steel of jazz music. And, you know, obviously that comes to full-on effect during um, Love Supreme. But there are many other records that, you know, he's kind of getting, he's getting a little bit uh, wild on. And this is, this is one of them. Um, yeah, it's on that regular impulse, original Impulse label. Glad to find that. Five bucks. Bam. Um, <clears throat> let's let's finish this up. Here we go. Miles Davis. Four or more recorded in a live concert. I love these uh, old jazz live records because these are not recorded in arenas. These are recorded in just regular venues. And it really gives you an idea of what the shows were like. You know, and... and you know, I can imagine just sitting there at a small, maybe wooden table and and uh, <laughs> listening to this go down. I mean, in the typical jazz club, you know. So, yeah, I, I get stoked on these uh, two-eye 
you know, pretty clean. I didn't pay much for this, $9. Um, super glad to have it. That said, uh, another Miles Davis record here. Bam, someday my prints will come. Uh, yeah, Killer's Row here, Coltrane, Hank Mobley, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb, Miles Davis. Miles Davis' beautiful ex-wife on the cover. Um, yeah, this is a great record. This is a great record. $7.99, 2 I. I've, I've gotten pretty lucky this week, huh? You know, I mean... Boom, fat stack. And yes, I know, there's been a lot of people kind of making comments about showing Miles and showing Train and all that, but there was quite a few other people involved in that. So, you know, I don't think any record collection is really complete without those Train and um, Miles records. So, uh, as a result, I, when I see them, I buy them and then I show them to you guys. That's just how that goes down. <laughs> Sitting here today with the 1958 Fender Stratocaster. I've owned this guitar for many years. Uh, if you don't have one, get one, <laughs> right? <laughs> just kidding. But if you have the means to get one and you play guitar, you should. Um, <clears throat> it's a great guitar. If you haven't heard my new record, Music from the Eagle Nebula by Condors in the System, please check it out on Bandcamp. You can also check out my uh, the record we did before that called Lose It All. It's also on the Bandcamp site. And I would really like to thank, if you've bought my record recently, thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot to me, and it really helps keep me in business here, you know? Uh, Oh, check this out. This is an Ace strap. You can see the Ace logo here. Um, you might recognize this. Uh, Hendrix wore this at Woodstock. And uh, Elvis wore it at uh, the 68 Comeback Special. So it's popular print. You know, this, was a, this is a vintage strap from the 60s. So, so anyway. Please like, subscribe, tell a friend, leave a comment down below. Um, until we meet again, episode 50 is quickly approaching. I'm going to give you a, a bit of a, without spoiling anything, okay? Next week's 49, okay? Jeffrey Lee is back with us for a subject that I won't mention yet. And it's going to be amazing. <laughs> and then the 50th video, uh, vinyl-related video on the Bob Bradley YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully that's going to be really cool. So stay tuned. Yeah. Bob out.